Hello, my name is Angel Silva. My name is uh, Kevin Elovato, and we're presenting the ELPS processor. Here we have the agenda. First, we're going to start off from the introduction. Then we're going to go to the baseline overview. Then the enhancements, future enhancements, and any further discussions we'll have at the end. What our name means is the word ELP stands for a high mountain range. Um, the Alps are a mountain range that is located in Europe. They lie within the countries of uh, France, Switzerland, Austria, Italy, and Germany. And the reason we chose this name is because we wanted it to uh, represent our high aspirations for the company. Here we have our baseline overview. You will go over the design guidelines, baseline features, data types, addressing modes, instruction sets, and formats, instruction set examples, and block diagrams. So what we used to design our processor was we used Xilinx ISC 14.7. Um, we used Microsoft Visio to design our diagrams. And we also used Microsoft Word to design, design the ISA manual. Here we have our baseline features. We have it as a Harvard architecture. So it has two separate uh, memory modules for instruction and data, both being 1K by 32. Next, we have it as a reduced instruction set computer. And it's also big NDN format. As you can see, the most significant byte would be on the first addressing mode. And with the and we also have it as a data type, or we also have the data types as integers with 32 bits and vectors with, with 128 bits, which is uh, part of our enhancement. These are the status flags that we have. We have an interrupt enable flag, which determines whether interrupts are enabled. We also have a carry flag, an overflow flag, a negative flag, and a zero flag which are affected during any logical operation or any arithmetic operation. Here are our, our data types. Uh, we have a 32-bit integer format that's signed. We have a 32-bit unsigned format. And we also have our enhanced uh, data type, which is the 128-bit vector format. We here we're going through the addressing modes. The first one being immediate mode. Um, here we, iType uses this mode except for store and load word because those in instructions are registered and direct. If we are to use uh, the immediate mode, then we should use the iType format where 16-bit values will be included in the instruction. Uh, for this example, uh, the three would be the offset and the R3 would have the bot value of uh, hex 5. Um, in this uh, operation, we would add them. Um, we will get a value of hex 8, and we will sort that to the destination register, which is R4. And that's, that's how this operation is completed. Another addressing mode we have is register mode. So what it is is the, a register is the destination and also registers are considered the operands as well. So in this example, R2 and R1 are registers. And when you add A plus 5, which are contained in those registers, that equals F, which is then stored into register 3. Now we have uh, register in direct mode. In this mode, um, we will be using this uh, we will be using iType formats to access or write to memory, which are the load and store word um, instructions. And from this, it's because uh, we have a base pointer. Um, <clears throat> on this example, uh, zero is a sign extended uh, media field, and R5 would be the base pointer that has the value of eight. Um, from there, we would uh, put, um, <clears throat> The R10 would be the destination that will get the memory with the base pointer of 0 plus the R5, so which is still hex 8. 
So here we have the instruction sets and formats. We have uh, the R type instructions starting from the shift left logical all the way to the set interrupt enable. We have the R format instruction. It has RS, RT, and RD, and our enhancement of uh, shift amount. And it also has a func, uh, func which is a function. Uh, here are our I-type instructions. So you know we have branch on equal, all the branches. Then we also have add immediate, all the way down to load word and store word. And this is our I format instruction. So we got an opcode, RS, RT, and a 16-bit immediate value. And RT is considered the uh, destination register when doing any type of arithmetic operation with an immediate. Uh, these are our J type instructions, so we only have jump and jump and link. And the J format instruction is we just have an opcode and a 26 bit jump address offset. These are enhanced instructions. So we have input, output, return from interrupt, uh, vector load immediate, store vector, load vector, vector add, and vector subtract. And this is our format for the enhanced instructions. So our opcode is 1F. Then we have RS, RT, and RD. Bits 10 through 8 is the function code. And then we also have an 8-bit immediate value for store vector and the vector. Now we have an instruction set example using the shift left logical instruction. Here we have SLL register 3, register 3, and 2, uh, with the offset being the 2, and reg uh, register 3 having this value. Um, that value will be shifted to the left twice. Um, we were able to do that because of our shift amount. And from there, we would store it back to R3 uh, with a new value, which is uh, this. And to further talk about our shift amount, uh, we have a snippet of our code over there. And um, so it's basically just a bunch of, uh, or we use a case statements. And for the barrel, sh uh, barrel shifting, T gets shifted by the sham. Uh, or the shift amount value. T is the contents uh, before being shifted, while sh uh, shift amount is the number of bits that will be, that will shift the, with the shift operation, so if it's left or right or in arithmetic. Wait, 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 there's only one bit for direction, so how do you do arithmetic shift? Oh, um, this is only for logical. We have a separate one for arithmetic. Uh, okay, yeah. so separate module. Yes, yeah, separate. Okay. Separate. So here are our block diagrams. The first one is our top module. It consists of a CPU, data memory, and input and output, with the data memory and input and output being by addressable, as it, as, it, uh, as it shows. This is our CPU module. As you can see, we have a control unit, an instruction unit, an integer data path, and a vector data path. And then we have this multiplexer as well, which is used to determine whether the nodes and stores is between a vector or an integer. And as you can see, this is our instruction unit. So we have a program counter, instruction memory, and an instruction register. And then we also have two sign extensions, one for store word and load word, and another one for store vector and load vector. And then this is our integer data path. So we have a 32 by 32 register file. Uh, we have our ALU, which also takes a shift amount. Um, we also have added a register called V address, which is used to calculate the address of the, where the vector is going to be stored or it read from. And then we also have a multiplexer here, which one comes from the uh, I.O. memory, and the other one comes from data memory. 
And then this is our vector data path. As you can see about the register file, it's 32 by 128 bits. And each of these ALUs, these four ALUs, uh, perform operations on 32 bits. And we also have these four registers right here, which will be used to uh, load registers with an immediate value or a value from memory. Are they bidirectional registers? Mm -hmm. uh, these, these are just notable registers. So when you do your vector store, you do use those registers or not? No, just for okay. vector load and okay. vector uh, load immediate. Okay. So here are our enhancements. Can you back up to that slide first? Before? Or, or are you going to explain how you did the loads and stores? Yeah, I'm going to explain. Okay, load. great. Sorry, Kevin. So here are enhancements, and uh, the first one that we will talk about are the is the input. So as you can see, input reads memory from an I/O module and stores it into a register inside the register file. So input uh, register one offset being zero and register two having a value of D zero. Um, D zero has a value of eight 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 eight. And that uh, value will be stored into R1. We also have the output. And the output writes the data from the register file to the memory inside an I.O. module. So in this, we have the example of output register 1 with the offset of 0 and a base pointer of register 2 and with uh, the R1 having a value of F. 000 and 800 with uh, and register 2 having the value of hex C0. So first uh, we would get the base pointer plus the offset and that will be the, the uh, address that your memory will be on and that's uh, where you will store the value of R1 which was F000. This is our uh, diagram for that. And we also have a return from interrupt instruction. What that does is it returns from an interrupt service routine to the location where it's interrupted. How it does this is it um, restores the status flags to when it was interrupted. And it does this by uh, popping the PC and the flags from the stacking memory. Um, another instruction we have, which is for the vectors, we have vector load immediate. And what it does, it loads a 128-bit immediate value from the instruction memory. And how it does this is it takes the four trailing words from the instruction memory and loads them into the register file. So for example, this instruction says to load the next four trailing words into register 1, which is RD. So as you can see, this first uh, word, trailing word, is right here, the second here, third right here, and then the fourth right here. So how we do this is um, this back in input is from the instruction register, and when we do the first trailing word, this goes through the multiplexer, and this register is loaded, and then on this, the second trailing word, this register is loaded, on the third trailing word, this register, and then on the fourth trailing word, this register is loaded, it is then concatenated, and then is loaded into a register inside the register file. And then also, um, we have this register as well to save the D address, because when we're going through trailing words, the D address will not, will not, be, will not be here, so we have to save it when we do the instruction before the trailing words. We also have store vector, and what this does, it's pretty similar to a store word. We calculate the effective address though by adding Rx and an 8-bit immediate value. So in this example, C0, R1 is equal to C0, and that's the base pointer. So we add that to 0, that's C0. And VR2 contains this value. So in memory, we will get the most significant bits here. The second slot will get these, second, uh, these bits right here, 
and then on the third we'll get these bits, and then on the fourth we'll get these bits. And this is just to show that we use a sign uh, eight bit sign extension instead of the sixteen bits to calculate the effective address. Mm -hmm. And how we calculate the effective addresses, we put the effective address into here. And when we do the first trailing word, we will count, we will use just the V address. And then on the second trail trailing word, we'll use V address plus four. Then on the third, we'll use V address plus eight. And then on the fourth, we will use V address plus 12. So you just did that with the sign statement? Uh, right here? Yeah. Yeah, I just increased this multiplexer, yeah. and then it yeah, would just quite. plus 4, plus yeah. 8. Yeah. And then this is just used to show that VRT is going to DL. So this is pretty much just to store our vector mm -hmm. to the uh, memory. Mm -hmm. Wait, back up for one sec, just so I... So, is that our original D out that used to be 32 bits? Yeah, this is now 128. So you changed D out to 128 bit. Oh, this is the vector data path. So where does D out go? Well, D out, it goes to a multiplexer. Okay, okay. Here, I'll show that. Right, so we have DL from the uh, vector data path. Got it. And then we have the most significant bits in mm -hmm. one slot, the next 32 bits in another, the next 32 bits in the third, and then the next 32 bits in the fourth. So in one clock, we will store we will store these most significant bits in the memory. And then on the second clock, these mm -hmm. ones, third clock, mm -hmm. and et cetera. We also have a load vector, and this loads a 128-bit vector from memory into a register location. And we calculate the effective address the same way, which is just the base pointer plus the 8-bit uh, immediate value. So we have 16 plus 0, so it would be 10 hex. So this is in the memory right now, mm -hmm. and we want to store this into a register. So we have 5A, 5A from right here, A5, A5 from right here, F8 from right here, and then A8, A8 right there. And then we pretty much uh, use the same way. We use a V address. We use V address to read the first, uh, first memory location. Then the next clock, you use the V address plus 4 to read the next location, then plus 8 to read the next location, and then plus 12 to read the next location. And, and then how it does it is uh, the D out from memory goes into V in. So um, when you read it first, this register is loaded. Oh, so when it reads it first, it reads uh, it reads the 32 bits and loads this register. Then it goes to the next memory location plus four, and it loads that register. Then the next one it re uh, loads it into that register. And then it loads it into this register, and then it just stores it into the register RT. Now we have vector add. Uh, it adds two 128-bit uh, vectors, so it's very similar to the add instruction uh, previously without the enhancements. So here we have vector R3, vector R1, vector R2, with the register 1, 2 being the two operands. So here, uh, vector R1 and R2 has these values, and next, um, after it's calculated, it will be stored on uh, the destination vector register. Here it's a lot more simpler with the, it's exactly the same as the first, or it's similar to the without the enhancements, except here we will uh, 
but uh, we will sep we have four separate uh, ALUs to go through the go through the off ramps. So the two off ramps will be in VRS and VRT, and then after it's uh, operated on, it will be it will go through the VLU. Now, why did you need uh, register 31 and register 29 of the vector register to those, be addressed? Those are for the because I think we still use a stack pointer. In, uh, a 128 bit stack pointer? No, no, no. You know what the thing is? We we used our our integer data path. We kind of integrated it into the vector data path. And what I do guess. You, what do you mean you integrated it? Well, is we kind of like took parts it? from it. And okay, so it is a separate unit. Yeah. It's just similarly. Composed. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could take, I think we could take this oh, out. Oh, you, you would definitely take those yeah, out. Yeah, we could take this out. Only what is price. applicable for the vector. Yeah. Wherever the vectors get written it's on. Just, I don't think know, it's always just one address, probably. Anyway, yeah, just curious. And uh, lastly, we have the vector subtraction. Uh, in this case, we just subtract the two 128-bit vectors. And the vector register 1 and 2 would have uh, these values. And subtracted, it will get uh, A, E, 2, E, 2, E. And it will be stored back into the destination register uh, vector R3. And in the diagram, instead of just addition, it, just, it will just be uh, subtraction. Uh, for feature and enhancements, uh, we we were planning to do uh, divide, multiply, load byte, uh, store byte, and uh, conditional jumps. But because of the time limit, um, we weren't able to round them, round it out and finish it. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed our presentation. Is there any questions? Questions? Uh, is there a way to mix? Registers like like an integer register. Can you use that in the vector register? Is there some way to cross them over? So you mean to like use use an integer and put it into like the vector? Yeah, like could you load like four of those registers into? Yeah, the we actually could. So if could it's that? located in memory, if we store an integer in memory, oh, so you can't do a direct access. You have to send it to memory, then from memory. Read yeah, it. you would kind of yeah. Okay, but you could make an instruction probably be able yeah. to do that fairly easily. Uh, MIPS has totally only 32-bit instructions. I don't know if that's grammatically the best way to phrase that. MIPS definitely only had 32-bit instructions. Do you have guys have now more than just 32-bit instructions? Um, it's just those trailing words where we have the four. Yeah, that's words. that's a deal breaker. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a deal. That that would take further thought. I mean, it's okay, because you didn't pipeline, but that, that would just blow the pipeline. Yeah, that's why we didn't put it as yeah. our future enhancement, yeah. because pipelining would well, just good. be yeah, very yeah, yeah. So to have an instruction that's five 32-bit words would kind of ruin fetch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't ruin fetch, but you'd have to accommodate it with a larger pipeline. Let's just put it that way. So it would blow up the pipeline. To be able to accommodate that, you'd have to swallow up all those reads. You could do it, though. but. The ramifications of doing something like that are great, but you just would have to have that fourth. And I know we don't have the time, but and you did a great job, you did a really good job. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.